This is John Colo with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to compare two vertical slow juicers head to head against each other so you guys could find out which one would be a better purchase for you if you guys are considering getting a vertical single auger style juicer. Now, vertical single auger style juicers are the juicers I'm showing this episode. is just one style of juicer, much like shoes, right? You have running shoes, you have hiking shoes, you have ballet shoes, you have high heel shoes, you have flat shoes, I mean you have dress shoes, so many different kinds of shoes and each shoe is good for a certain purpose. Some shoes of course are multi-purpose and just like the juicers, the vertical juicers are pretty much all purpose juicers. They're pretty much going to juice everything. Yes, will they juice wheatgrass? Yes they can. You should probably cut it. I have a video on that. Um, will they juice fruits? Yes, they're probably one of the best slow style juicers to juice fruits out there. And basically that's why I like them. So I mean if you're not going to juice any particular one thing like sprouts or wheatgrass or John I'm going to do 80% leafy greens, these vertical juicers are not for you. You want to check my other videos for a horizontal machine. But um, if, you don't want to, if you don't know what kind of juicer is the best for you, check the link down below. I'll put a link down below where I compare and contrast all the different style juicers on the market so you guys can get the best one for you. Anyways, on with the show. Today we will be comparing the Huram. Um, juicer. This is the HAA model, their Alpha Series, which is like their high-end latest design, and we're going to compare that against the Shine Juicer. Now, this is kind of like an even but uneven match, because this machine here literally cost about three times the amount of the Shine. So, yes, you're going to pay three times more for this. Meanwhile, you could have got basically about three of these, kept one for yourself, and give two to your friends and family to help change their lives because when you, when people get on juicing from the testimonials that come in constantly to me, people lose weight, they get healthier, they rebuild their immune system. And I mean, that's actually my story. That's why I got into juicing. That's why I'm so passionate about juicers. That's why I make all these videos because I want to spread juicing further and wider and get people interested in it and more importantly, um, give people the knowledge they need to buy the right juicer the first time. If there was somebody like me when I got my first juicer when I, as an adult, because my parents had a juicer when I was a kid, um, you know, I definitely would have got a different juicer back then, but I didn't know any better because I just saw the infomercial and I bought it on the TV and that's what I got and, you know, come to find out that's definitely not the best style machine. So that's why I do these videos for you guys. And if you guys appreciate these videos, the work, the time, the effort, that I go in and my giving my expert commentary on the machines, I would encourage you guys to purchase your juicer from me at discountjuicers.com. This allows me to continue to pay my light bill, my food bill, pay my rent, my mortgage, um, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So I appreciate you guys that have supported me in the past, and uh, you know, thank you guys who will support me in the future. And I do want to let you guys know that we do have a price match policy. So should you find any of the items that we sell. Um, you know, from a website at a lower price, a delivered price, um, you know, I'm glad to match that price if I'm able to. That being said, I wouldn't encourage you guys to support me at full price because that just allows me to better, um, you know, uh, keep up the education work that other big stores, big box stores, they don't care. They just want to sell you something and make a couple bucks and they're not going to be to stand, they're not going to be there to answer your pre, um, you know, questions before you buy the juicer or be there to answer your questions after you buy the juicer and more importantly they're not going to be your advocate in case a machine fails and no longer works and you cannot get the service from the company actually just recently I wish somebody was my advocate for the harvest right freeze dryer company had some big issues with them and even though I'm me and make a lot of videos they they didn't help me <laughs> which sucks so anyways I'm there to advocate for you and I can say that hundred percent of the people that I have advocated for when when that was needed um, have gotten service from the respected companies because the companies that I work with, they definitely want to keep me happy. They want to keep my cu cu my customers happy because basically it's just the right thing to do. All right, so uh, yeah, links down below to the website discountjuicers.com and link down below for this exact model down below so you can check out the uh, current pricing. Now, I do let, need to let you guys know that I'm not currently a Huram dealer. I own several actually Huram juicers. I have visited their factory in Korea. And, um, you know, I had requested her from her on USA um, to be a dealer and sell their products in the United States multiple times. And every time they say, you know, we're not interested in you selling our juicers, John, for whatever reason. And I don't know exactly know what that is. I know they have more of a, maybe a big box or box store, you know, uh, market and they sell a lot of things direct. But they basically don't have a lot of dealers, which is, you know, a pro and a con. Um, 
And anyways, the, the, the main differences between these two models are like, because um, they're both vertical juicers, is the company that supports them and stands behind them. Tribest is now in business in the United States for over 30 years now, so they're a solid U.S. company that has been basically making healthy living easy for people who want to eat more fruits and vegetables, and I think that's really great. Huram, you know, as they have been quite established in Korean, probably the number one Korean company selling juicers, as far as I'm aware. Um, you know, they don't really have a good track record, in my personal opinion, in the United States. They keep going through different distribution routes, models that haven't really worked, in my opinion. And if you look up some reviews, which I'm not making up, you know, they, they've had maybe not the best uh, history of customer service or people that have previously bought a Huram and getting service and or parts for it. And I hear, and I don't know if this is true or not, that some parts from some old machines are no longer available um, from Huram. So then people are just basically left in the dust. So I want you guys to be aware, you know, you're buying more than just a juicer. You're buying literally a change in your life. And if you can't get service or parts for the machine several years later, if it should break or fail, then basically you got to spend your hard-earned money and buy another one, which I, I don't want you guys to do. You know, a lot of the juicers, I sell the high-end juicers, they have, you know, 15-year warranties on the entire machine, 12-year warranties on the entire machine, 10-year warranties on the entire machine, you know, and I mean, these are the high-end ones. This the Shine is, is, is probably the best quality low-end juicer that you could find. And meanwhile, the Huram, right, they advertise 10-year warranty, like, wow, John, that's great. Three times more, it has actually twice, th three, about over three times the warranty of the Shine here, 10 year warranty. But then if you read the warranty, it's not 10 years on the whole machine like other juicers in this price range, you would get a 10 year warranty on the whole machine. On the Huram, they basically give you a 10 year warranty on the motor body only. And hey, I think that's great, they're giving you guys a 10 year warranty on the motor um, only. But here's the thing, I've never had a motor fail on me. I had a motor kind of like, like make funny noises, but it still worked. But I never had a motor go bad on me in a high quality, um, you know, South Korean made uh, juicer, basically. I have had inexpensive motors from China break on me for sure, but not the high quality motors from Korea. So basically you'll probably never use that 10 year motor warranty, but what you will be using is their shorter, only two year warranty on all the top parts here. And I think that's really a, a big challenge that I have with Huram selling some of their machines at even as expensive as $699 for basically a machine that has a nice motor in it. And then it's basically mostly plastic parts. I think that's maybe a little bit overpriced in my personal opinion, especially for having only a two year warranty on some of these parts. And you know, frankly, uh, the parts here are the ones most likely to fail. What's gonna fail on this machine? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, probably the top might fail. There's a magnet in here that may come out, which then the machine will not turn on. Um, and also, what may happen in here is a screen uh, may break. Um, you know, that can happen if you're not using the juicer properly. So I want you guys to use the juicer properly, and I make many videos to share with you guys how to do that. Check the link down below. Juice like a pro in any vertical slow juicer. Very important if you get this juicer, that juicer, any other vertical style juicer, you have to use my tips to have the best um, experience with your juicer to not overload it, to not stress out the parts so that it doesn't break sooner rather than later. If you just start haphazardly pushing things in and using the pusher and all these things, something I do not recommend, the machine can fail prematurely. And, and it shouldn't. I mean, the, the good quality machines should work for many, many, many years. So it's like, literally I want you guys to make a one-time investment of a good juicer instead of just any old cheap one. All right? So yeah, warranty, yeah, 10 years on the motor, two years on the parts, and meanwhile the Shine has a three-year warranty on the entire machine. So actually, technically, you know, on, on these parts, right, two years, three years, this machine is three times less approximately. It has an extra year on, on the warranty. So, you know, that is huge to me in this price category. If you guys, you know, don't have a budget, or if you're on a budget, you want to get def definitely this low-end machine because it's solid. But if you have more money, then it might be prudent to get one of the higher end vertical single auger juicers such as the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer uh, Elite or their new EVO 820 or the Slow Star Juicer by Trivest or the Omega VSJ 843. Those are my top picks for vertical slow juicers at the time. Check the link down below where I compare all those three head to head, side by side, so you guys can learn the pros and cons of each of them. All right, so we went over the warranty, I guess, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say on these guys. Let's just start taking them apart and uh, see. All right, so all these juicers operate in pretty much the same way. They have a feed chute 
And uh, both of these feed chutes, I mean the Huram actually has a nicer feed chute that's actually larger funnel on the top. The Shine, a little bit more compact, a little bit shorter. And then actually the feed chute sizes on both these are smaller than other vertical single auger juicers that we offer. And so, I mean, I would say that they're about the same on the feed chute size and then on the bottom, basically, I mean, they're, they're fairly similar. So these parts are fairly similar there. And uh, I think uh, Trivest advertises this as a BPA-free, as does the Huron, all right? So the next part coming out is the auger. If we could go ahead and pull the auger out here. So these augers, a little bit different, a little, a little bit the same. Of course, the Huron three times lar uh, more money. And of course, it has a much larger uh, beefier auger. So I mean, this is like, this is like a toy compared to the, the uh, Huron here. Now both these augers implement a, a kind of, but not really, cutting blade. So as the shine goes around, there's a auger that basically helps to cut a little bit, but in no big way, so that's why you guys need to pre-cut some certain produce items such as celery and leafy greens before you put it in the machine. Things like carrots don't need to be pre-cut because this little uh, cutter in parentheses or quotations will kind of help cut things. On the uh, Huram here, it actually has two kind of uh, blades, one on this side, one on this side, so it actually does double the cutting. And, uh, you know, auger design, they're both very similar. How these machines work is basically the item gets uh, crushed up and squeezed, and the juice comes out, all right? And then on the bottom of these, I do like the HAA because it actually has a nice wide space, like underneath, for your finger to get into to clean out the pulp that will accumulate in the bottom. This is totally normal. Don't freak out. John, there's pulp in the bottom of my auger. Totally not normal. And, uh, you know, the thing I don't like about the shine is that in the auger here, it's, it's a much tighter place. I mean, they do have a recess in there, which is really good because the original vertical juicers did not have a recess, which would ha what would happen then in that case is that pulp would get stuck underneath the auger, end up jacking it up, and then it would be almost impossible to get your machine apart. At least with the recess, that gives you some flexibility. Um, and the pulp will actually end up in there instead of jacking up the auger, which is a good thing. Now the bottom of this, inset inside where there's like a little rotation, inside this one is actually stainless steel, and inside this one, uh, they don't have any of that in there. And both, they have a stainless steel motor shafts. So yeah, these are the, uh, the augers, uh, I mean the Huron auger, definitely uh, heavier, all right? Next parts coming out is the screen and wiping blade assembly, right? and on the Huram, and then on the Shine, there's just a screen. There's no wiping blade assembly on the, on the Shine, and that's probably because of the lower price point. So, I mean, this is a pro and a con that there's no wiping blade assembly, right? Basically, the wiping blade assembly is inside there because it spins around, and it basically has these uh, silicone squeegees, kind of like the windshield wipers on your car, and it kind of keeps all the juice as it comes out. It squeezes it, squeegees it off, and it goes out the uh, spout here, into your collection cup. So it kind of helps you to get, uh, you know, the juice kind of moving around in the juicer more efficiently. It also helps clean your screen just a tad bit. Now, um, so that's a good thing. The con is that something has to drive the screen. And in this case, uh, or the wiping blade, in this case, you see all these little gear teeth on the bottom. So this gear teeth fits into these little gear teeth that basically spins this as the machine is running. And, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing I don't like about this machine is that there's all these gear teeth because if you've ever juiced and you've got juice on the gear teeth and then the juice hardens, then you have basically juice stuck on individual in between all the teeth. And hopefully you guys are flossing your teeth every night. I wouldn't want to necessarily floss or have to brush in between each um, tooth. Uh, definitely going to be a lot harder to clean, whereas a shine, you don't even have this part to clean whatsoever. You just have the juicing screen. And, uh, you know, based on how the shine is set up, you know, I guess we'll talk about this in a little bit, is the, is the duty cycle. We'll talk about that later. Um, but anyways, this is the screen on the shine. This is the screen on the Huram. And actually, look at this. The shine screen can almost fit inside the Huram screen because it is a bit smaller, which, once again, is a pro and a con. It's a pro because there's less screen air to clean. The con is that there's less holes for juice to come out. All right, and then looking at these screens, it looks like the uh, top set of holes on the screen on the shine are a little bit bigger than the ones on the Huram, and the bottom set of holes on the shine are a little bit larger uh, than the holes on the Huram there. And uh, inside the Huram screen basically looks like that. And what happens is, as the juicer's running, it takes the produce and it shoves it against these little plastic um, extrusions here. 
that kind of help to chop up the produce. And there's basically one, two, three, four main ones in the uh, Huram, and there's uh, one, two, three uh, main ones in the shine. But then as you as the produce moves down, uh, you know, to the bottom of the shine, there's all these other plastic protrusions that may help grind things up and get the juice out. Now, a thing I like about the Huram is that, as you guys can see, the screen is just completely open on the bottom, right? Um, this is the new style generation of juicers that I normally only like. Uh, the shine here actually has, is not, it's open on the bottom, but it's not totally open. There's like a little ring, and then there's a little hole in the bottom. So basically, on this machine, all the pulp actually has to go through this hole and then come out the machine, which can be a stoppage point. That being said, actually, juicing in the shine, I haven't been able to stop it when I'm using my proper techniques. Um, or clog it up, which is impressive because this hole is a lot larger than most holes on other juicers. You know, they have Trivest has definitely designed this quite well and made modifications to it so that it, it's, it's probably one of the best low cost machines I've found actually. Another con of this machine is that uh, the way this uh, screen locks in, there's only two locking points. So if you guys could look at this, this kind of protrudes and then this kind of uh, protrudes or basically locks in. So when you put this screen in, let's see, just like that, it kind of locks in at two points. So if you try to wiggle it, it barely wiggles. But if you lock this guy in, you guys can see like in here, there's basically four locking points when you put this uh, screen in, so that it's a, it's a lot more stable uh, than the Shine. I don't think this is necessarily going to be an issue because, I mean, they just they did do a real good job with locking it in, so there is barely any thing, all right? The next part of these two machines is the juicing bowl. So the juicing bowl, you know, a lot larger on the Huram. It is marked up to 450 milliliters, and actually the Shine bowl is actually not marked at all. Um, and what normally happens is you can do mixing in the juicing bowl, which is something I do not recommend because it may be lowering your yield based on testing I've done. You put the spout cap down, and it's going to keep all the juice inside to mix around, and then you let it out when you're done. I prefer to let all the juice come out as you're making it and then only use a spout cap to prevent drips on the table. Now I do need to say that this uh, juicer is actually missing the spout cap, normally there would be one here. Now actually on the cleaning for this part, I, I prefer the shine actually because if you look in there, I mean it just goes straight down, it's basically almost an all flat bottom, there's no like nooks and crannies, super simple, super easy to clean. Um, on that. Uh, the thing I don't like is that it's a bit more smaller in diameter, so a bit harder to get in there. I have a dish brush and the machine comes with a cleaning brush you could use to get in there. Now on the uh, Huram, you know, once again, I kind of like it because it's nice and big, you could get in there, but the problem is, I don't know if you guys could see in the bottom there if I angle this, I don't know, but in the bottom of this, instead of just being completely flat like this one, there's all these little nooks and crannies and channels because the way they lock the screen in, that pulp may um, you know, get stuck in. In addition, there's that little gear there in the back. I don't know if you guys can see that gear, but that gear will get crudded up with juice and sometimes celery strings and whatnot, and it, you know, can be a little more challenging uh, to clean as well. Uh, both of them have um, nice heavy-duty uh, gaskets in the middle to prevent uh, juice leaking on your motor shaft, which was an issue with some of the early vertical auger juicers. They would always leak on the motor shaft. Um, both these are kind of the new design, whereas they are actually lifted up off the bottom, so there's very little chance, unless you're really not using the juicer properly, for uh, juice to go through the seal and then end up on the top of the motor, which then it might get into the motor and then ruin it uh, prematurely. I would say on these gaskets, just feeling inside the uh, Trivest gasket feels to be a lot more, um, have a lot more different like levels, maybe like four levels of a seal protection, whereas on the Huram it appears to only have like maybe one, two levels. So yeah, a lot better sealing. Also this gasket is recessed, which is a bit cleaner, and this one actually pops up. That's a pro and a con that makes this one harder to remove, but also this one probably is going to get less infiltration with, uh, you know, debris underneath it. Now the other thing about these is that uh, all vertical juicers, for the most part, with some exceptions, will have a little tab. I don't know if you guys can see that little tab right there. Uh, this tab is a silicone flap. The silicone flap should be removed for cleaning, but when you are juicing, you should be actually putting it in all the way. This provides some back pressure on the produce so that it keeps it inside the juicer and gets it basically drier before it allows it to come out. Now, on the Huram, this is kind of a unique design. 
Uh, Hiram has this little switch here, and if you guys can see the little plug, the plug is currently in, and the plug is right there, and if I move this little uh, switch there, it pops out. So this is a pro and a con, right? This allows you to basically uh, throttle this open and close as you're juicing in case something's stuck in there. You could basically just open it up and maybe whatever stuck could come out. Depending on what you're juicing, you may want to um, leave it shut, which is probably recommended most of the time, or you can leave it open. But if you do leave it open, then you may get some juice collecting on the bottom of your motor housing, which is not optimal. Um, now, the thing about that I don't like about this is if we just open it up, you could cl re re readily clean the bottom of this gasket here, but you can't really, I, I can't like try to twist this. I could twist it a little bit and clean a little bit of the top, but you really can't easily clean the top of the gasket. Whereas on the try this, you could pull it out, you could easily clean the bottom, and then basically just flip it over and you guys can easily clean the top. So that, that's a point where you, know, you may get some mold buildup or something because you're really not able to clean this plug due to this uh, special flap. I personally would rather be able to clean the flap um, top and bottom than to have this plug, but you know, to each their own. Now in addition, uh, there is some apparatus underneath the screen or underneath the bowl that you guys can't see that basically spins. Uh, as the motor's spinning, it turns a little gear in there, so there's some kind of gearing underneath in there. Whereas uh, this is a one-piece unit, so actually in my unit when I washed it, um, water just kind of was stuck in there and then dribbling out, so if you're washing it not carefully, you get juice pulp and things stuck in the bottom in there that may be harder to clean and get stuck. Whereas on the Shine, it's basically a one piece, easy to clean, open on the bottom with no additional kind of screwed in parts or gearing. So they just kind of made it simpler. Now, both these machines have safety switches that will not allow the machine to come on unless it's operated properly. The Shine is more of an old fashioned style. It basically has a switch here in the back that basically is enacted if you put, if you assemble it properly, and you put the uh, top on properly, it's open and closed. It'll engage a switch, with the, which will then allow you to turn the machine on. Right now I'm turning the machine on and off. It's not gonna come on because it senses the machine is not a part, is, is a part and not fully assembled. And on the Huron, uh, pretty much the same thing. If the machine will not come on, turn, turn it on and off, unless the magnetic sensor, which is a bit more advanced, um, is engaged. I have had issues with Huron made juicers um, have the magnet kind of get dislodged and then no longer work, which normally uh, would be should be covered under warranty. They should replace the parts if the magnet becomes uh, dislodged. And meanwhile, I, I don't think I've had too many issues with the the sw switch going bad actually personally. All right. So I guess down to the motor base. The motor base on the Shine a lot smaller. This is a really good compact unit because it is small. Uh, this also is actually stainless steel you know, lined on the outside, so it looks nice and upscale. And actually, to be honest with you guys, the Shine Juicer is not a juicer I use every day in my kitchen. The Shine Juicer is my go-to juicer for traveling. You know, I have a, a regular juicer, Omega VSJ 843 in the kitchen that I use all the time, and then this is my travel juicer because it is so small and it works so well, it is so easy to clean, so compact, um, you know, I could just easily pack this in my bag, and I, yes, I take it in on my TSA carry-on. Check the link down below for a video I did with the Shine, actually in a hotel when I was traveling. All right, and then uh, so yeah, this uh, nice, nice thing. Oh, and then the, the negative thing about the Shine, the motor here, is that it has a short 10-minute duty cycle. Right? I mean, this is not a high-end machine by any means. It's a good, solid, low-cost machine. If you need to get started juicing, you don't have a lot of money to spend or invest in your health. Um, Three-year warranty, once again, 10-minute uh, duty cycle. How much juice can you make in 10 minutes? So I've, I've tried this multiple times, like put the stopwatch on, timed it, juice, have all the produce prepped as, as much as I need to do, and just drop the produce in, drop the produce in. I basically came up with, you could make about easily 48 ounces, probably get up to about maybe 60, 64. So that's basically two quarts of juice in one sitting, and depending on what you're juicing, you wouldn't want to really juice uh, too much more because they don't have that automatic wiping blade on this. So I mean this machine is designed perfectly to make up to 60 ounces of juice in one 10 minute session. After that you should turn the juicer off and let it rest and cool down. If you run it for longer than that the machine may shut down on itself because it is overheating and you don't want to basically um, lessen the overall life of your juicer by having it overheat uh, too often. And uh, you know if you do need to make a lot more juice than 64 ounces in one session, you know, a couple times a day, 
then you definitely want to spend more money and get a better machine. Meanwhile, on the Hurum, I mean, these are industrial motors here. These are some of the best motors that I've seen in any juicers. I've used juicers made in the Hurum factory for an hour straight without stopping, without any problems. That being said, probably the in, written in the instruction manual says it has a 30 minute duty cycle, which is three times longer than this. You know, on a regular basis, I will juice like two gallons of juice in one sitting, you know, in a machine made in the Huron factory. Um, so yeah, much better motor, but also you're paying three times the price. Um, oh yeah, and then the other thing is that uh, this machine has a two prongs on the plug where it plugs into the wall, whereas the Huron has a much more heavy duty, uh, you know, uh, cord. I think they're both about six feet long, which has three prongs. Um, both of these do have the electrical certification for the United States. All right. Uh, next, I want to go ahead and show you guys actually the reassembly of the machines. It is really simple. The shine juice, you're going to take the bowl, put it on the top, and you've got to line up this white dot uh, with, the, uh, with the open um, padlock here on the front that goes in. You're going to take the screen. The screen has basically that um, little hole here that basically lines up with the the uh, where the pulp comes out so you just drop that in there I don't think there's any dots on that and then it kind of drops into place oh and I didn't mention that both these machines you know have a cutout where the pulp comes out so you could kind of get in there and easily clean it I do like on the Huron it actually is nice and large I could actually get my um, pointer finger in there and on the shine uh, I could still get my pointer finger in there but it's a little bit more tight so I do like actually how much larger this is all right and then we're going to take the auger. The auger basically just goes right in, and you're going to just drop that down in there, spin it down, and then it should lock into place. And then we're going to go ahead and take the top and uh, put the top on, and then lock that into place. Uh, there's a dot on the back that you have to line up with the open padlock, and uh, you basically lock that into place. And then what happens is I'm going to go ahead and now take take a uh, take the top. Well, I already pushed the top over from the padlock to the lock position. So now we're fully assembled. And if you assemble it properly, the machine should turn on. <laughs> all right, one sec. All right. All right, there we go. I wasn't totally locked into place, all right? All right, so the assembly on the Huron are pretty simple. We want to make sure, number one, your pull flop is closed. I think I did that on the uh, shine. This basically just goes on the top, sets in place. You're going to go ahead and take your wiping blade that goes right around the screen, drop it into place, make sure it rotates freely. And uh, you're just basically going to drop that in. There's no particular way to do it. You're just going to drop it in. You're going to go ahead and spin it down until it basically uh, drops down. Maybe like, uh, I don't know, quarter, eighth of an inch. And then you're going to take the auger. And then you're going to drop that, that in and just push it down until it seats. You're going to take your top. And there's a little arrow on the top here that needs to end up lining up with the arrow on the top here. But you're just basically going to... Um, you're going to offset that and then turn it to lock, and if you assemble this properly, it should turn on. And uh, there you go. So now that we have both these guys assembled, I think the next thing is we're going to go ahead and juice. And what I'm going to juice today is celery. So if you want to learn more about juicing celery, the best juicer for celery, check the link down below. I did specifically on several different juicers. I compared side to side on the machine. I recommend the best for celery. In this episode, I want to just compare celery juice in the Huron versus the Shine because celery juice is all the rage. If you guys check Instagram, Medical Medium, I mean, so many people are getting a lot of amazing health benefits and, and healing themselves through just drinking celery juice. So that's why I'm using the celery today because it is an up-and-coming vegetable that many people want to juice. All right, so as you guys can see, we're all set up, ready to juice. We've got the catch cups, we've got the juice collectors, we're using sieves to uh, strain out the juice here for you guys, and we got the scales with the celery um, pre-measured, weighed out, and we're gonna go ahead and do a weigh-in to make sure we have a fair fight. All right, so you guys can see, we got celery in mason jars there, and if we go down and look on the shine side, it looks like we have 563 grams of celery. Uh, that's a half, about a, half, a little bit over a half kilo. And over on the Haram side, once again, 563 grams of celery. So it looks like to me, uh, let's go ahead and show 563 on both scales at the same time. Looks like to me that we have a fair fight. So let's do it. All right, now that you guys saw we have a fair fight, we're going to go ahead and move these scales out of the way. And what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and time how long it takes to juice in each juicer for you guys. Um, I think I'm going to only start the juicer once I start juicing because we have a step before we need to even start juicing is we need to take our celery out and we will need to pre-cut it 
But pre-cutting celery is not necessary in many juicers, but it is necessary uh, for the best results in the vertical juicers, otherwise your juicer will jam and it will cause you headaches, which I don't want you guys to have. If you guys don't like pre-cutting your celery, you want to get a different style machine, check the link down below for the video I did comparing all the major juicers on celery. Actually, the vertical is the only style you need to pre-cut your celery. All the other juicers you can just put in. Um, that being said, you know I prefer to pre-cut my celery because the vertical juicer, despite pre-cutting, even in my test where I actually included the pre-cutting time in the test, it saved time <laughs> because you don't have to necessarily push each produce item into the vertical juicer, which does need to happen with others. All right. So uh, we're just we got basically a knife here and we got a cutting board and we're going to cut the celery up. Doesn't take a lot of time. I like to just basically level all this up. Uh, the celery was already pre-washed. Costco now is actually selling in some Costco's pre-washed celery sticks. Uh, I think no, are they no, are they pre-washed or pre-cut? I forget. But anyways, I, I encourage you guys to actually buy celery in a whole head format. It's always less expensive. All right. So we're just gonna line these up and we're just gonna come down with a knife. Super simple, super easy. I have a ceramic knife here nice style chopping knife and just go down the line now my goal is to cut each piece like eighth of an inch I don't always make that sometimes I do but I minimally do a quarter inch so I like to tell people cut it an eighth, eighth, an eighth of an inch and if you're like me you know everything's always skewed everything's a bit what bigger than you think <laughs> uh, so then I basically end up cutting it a quarter inch if you cut it any larger than a quarter inch uh, you know you may run into issues so yeah, you want to just basically slice these guys up. And also, you know, slicing celery up is a, is a really good idea. It's those strings that will get caught in your teeth if you're eating celery. And these same strings will jam up the juicer. And actually, one of the things I like to do is I just like to pre-cut celery like this big, put in a big bowl, and then just make a dressing and pour the dressing over it and have a bowl of celery instead of a bowl of leaves as a salad. Anyways, so yeah, now, now we got that all that pre-cut. I mean, that didn't take hardly any time. Super simple, super easy. We'll ha have all, all our celery here. Let's move that out of the way. I'm going to go hit, hit hit start on the stopwatch, and I'm just going to basically just take a handful of celery, drop it in the machine, let the machine process and run before I add the next handful in until I'm done. And then you'll see the process and how long it takes. I do need to say that the Shine Juicer runs at 40 revolutions per minute, which is actually one of the slowest vertical auger juicers on the market. The Huram runs at 43, which is not much faster. The 3 RPMs does not make a difference. It doesn't make this one better because it's 3 RPMs lower. You know, anyways, uh, let's get started. Hit start and turn this on. So we'll speed this up for you guys to save you guys a little bit of time. You guys can just see the, the end process here. All right, so I'm just about done juicing the celery in the shine juicer. I have one handful of little pieces left that we're just gonna go ahead and throw in there. And it took, took me basically about a minute and a half so far. Now I put the last handful in. Now the most important thing is when you're done juicing, you put the last handful in. Don't just put the last handful in. I put it in, shut it off, because as you guys can see, the machine is still working. These are slow juicers. They don't operate fast. When you put the stuff in, the juice instantly comes out and blows it all over the table like some of the high speed machines on market. All right, so how do you know when this is done? Well, you can see we still got a nice, uh, you know, a, a, um, you know, flow of juice coming out, and the pulp is still moving. So basically, we're going to let the machine run until the pulp stops moving, until the drips significantly are reduced. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and uh, do this off camera. We'll come back when we're completely done. All right, so I think we're about completely done. We're going to go ahead and hit stop, and basically it took uh, two and a half minutes to juice from start to finish in the shine juicer basically we have very few drips now the machine is still running on the inside so we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and hit the reset there all right next let's go ahead and juice in the curom juicer and we're going to go ahead and remove this guy out of the way and we're going to go ahead and chop our celery so i mean some other tips i want to give you guys on the celery is when you guys are picking out celery to buy try to get ones that's nice and firm not soft and try to pick them heavy for their weight. The heavier the celery is, the more water content that's in there, which means you guys are gonna make more juice, you're getting a better deal on the celery you're buying, and as celery um, gets old, it kind of basically it loses the moisture inside the celery. It gets a lot lighter, and consequently, as the celery ages, it also gets a lot more bitter. So if you like great celery juice, one time you get it, it's kind of bitter, maybe you pick some old celery, and uh, try to do a better job the next time, it'll be sweeter the next time. 
One of the things you're not seeing me juice today, which you can juice, are the celery leaves. The celery leaves can have a more bitter, or I like to say stronger flavor, which some people may or may not like. You know, it's probably better if actually you include the leaves, as long as they're clean and not funky, um, in the juices, okay? I guess the final tip is try to find celery that is as deep green as you possibly can. The deeper the green, uh, the more nutrition there is in there. All right, and the, maybe the fresher it is, because as the celery gets old, loses water content, and the color kind of changes. All right. So uh, next, let's go ahead and juice in the hurrah. Make sure we are closed here, and we're just gonna go ahead and hit start, and we're gonna speed this up for you guys. All right. All right. I think we're pretty much down to our last handful on the Huram juicer here and uh, my comments are actually I liked how this worked I like the larger funnel if I put like a large handful of celery up in the top of the funnel I could kind of like put most of it in and then leave some on the side and then basically just tip that in as I needed it one thing I also like a lot about the Huram which is kind of unique is it actually has a clear feed chute this top part is black but this is kind of smoke so you can kind of see what's happening on the inside there so you know if you if there's something stuck inside there or not without having to look directly down um, normally you're looking down at your juicer because you're standing up and it's on your countertop to use whereas I'm kind of looking at it at the side since I'm sitting down. Um, let's see, this, the pulp has pretty much stopped coming out where the um, pulp comes out, the juice is still dripping out and I think we're about two minutes and we'll probably just let it maybe run another 15 seconds because juice is still running out. The other thing I like to do is I like to tip the juicer forward just to make sure that all the juice that is in there uh, will be coming out. I do need to let you guys know that when I first started the shine juicer, some juice started dripping out the pulp ejection port. This is completely normal on juicers if that should happen to you. Normally, you know, as the produce is juiced, it's a bit wet, and then that may come out both spouts until the machine starts running, and then basically you're just going to get uh, pulp out this one for the most part, and then juice out that one. In the Huram, actually, I didn't see it leak any um, kind of juice out until the pulp started actually coming out, which is quite good. We're going to go ahead and stop that, and we're going to go ahead and stop this. So two, I don't know, about the same time. I can't say the Huron was faster by any large stretch. Maybe it's a little bit quicker feeding in. It, I mean, it runs a little bit quicker. I don't know, and it has a larger feed chute, larger auger, so it just handles stuff a little bit faster, but in no significant way. Put the spout cap down, and now let's go ahead and take a look at the juice it created for us here. Going to go ahead and turn it this way, and we're going to go ahead and turn this this way. So first, I want to show you guys actually shake this down, show you guys how much pulp was actually in the uh, sieve that the juicer put out. Actually, look at this. This is impressive. It looks like the Hurrah made a little bit more pulp in the juice than the Shine, which is impressive to me. Now, depending on what you're juicing, this can vary, right? If you're juicing carrots, I know for sure carrots on the Shine are going to put more pulp in the juice than the Huron, but in this case, it looks like the um, Huron put a tad more, but it's negligible. It's not. It's basically nothing. All right. So uh, next, let's go ahead. Both juices are made at low RPM, and the interesting thing is the Shine juice doesn't have a whole lot of like air bubbles in the top, and the Huron juice has a lot more air bubbles in the top, which is kind of interesting to me. Uh, but let's go ahead and check the yield to see if there is a difference. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys a close-up on the juice yields. Maybe we'll start with the shine over here. On the shine juicer, as you guys can see, we're pretty much right at the 400 milliliter mark, pretty much straight up. Then if we go over to the Huram side here, looks like it made more. And the Huram made, uh, looks like to me, about 425, 430 milliliters. So it actually made 30 milliliters more, maybe approximately than the shine juicer there. All right, so as you guys can see, basically there's a very small difference, uh, 30 milliliters more in the Huram than on the shine. Maybe that's like 8% more juice, but let me remind you guys of the price difference. The price difference is three times more the money. Um, and I guess the pulp here, if we could squeeze the pulp on the shine, I mean, it's still fairly wet. What you could probably do maybe is run it back through the juicer and follow it with some carrots. If you just put pulp alone through the juicer, I don't know how well it's going to do. Uh, meanwhile, on the Huram juicer here, if we take the pulp, I mean, this stuff's also fairly wet, and we could drain that out as well. If you want to get a lot drier pulp, then you're going to have to get something like a Green Star Pro, which is my favorite juicer for getting the highest yield on celery and maintaining high nutrient levels.
<laughs> all right and then let's go ahead and try the cellar juice now I don't know if you guys can see this I should have pointed out better but over on the juice here on the shine you know it's um you guys can't really see that too good um, there's barely any air bubbles now it has been sitting out a little bit longer um, you know than the Huram but the Huram made a lot more air bubbles which is kind of interesting air bubbles are basically just uh, aerated juice right which in my opinion is not the best thing uh, as it starts to, starts to cause oxidative damage to the juice. All right, we're going to try the juice from the shine. Hmm. Well, that's actually some good cellar juice. Like cellar juice made in a high speed machine or even worse in a blender. It tastes so bad because it's starting to turn brown. It's oxidized. This actually has a really nice neutral flavor. I did a good job today picking my celery and using some low RPM juicers to make it. Totally good. Wow. All right, now the juice from the Huram. I don't expect these to taste any different. Um, I mean, they're pretty much the same color. They look very similar. Oh, wow. You know, I do detect, actually, the shine juice was pretty clean. Like, it's like drinking water in the, in the texture. And in the Huram, I'm tasting some kind of particulate. So the particulate must have been small enough to fit through the sieve, and there was just basically no particulate in the shine. Yeah, a little bit particulate. So maybe that made up for some of the difference because it did, if it put some particulate in there, which would be evidenced by the, by the sieves, because I did see a little bit more particulate caught in the screen in the sieve here, whereas on the shine, there was not as much. So quite interesting there. So yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much the, oh, let's let's go ahead and show you guys actually what you guys need to clean after you're done juicing the celery. I like to do that. Let's go ahead and take off the top part. So the top part, oh, and I forgot one little piece of celery here. <laughs> um, on the top part, basically on the bottom of it, there's basically hardly anything to clean. I basically just turn on the hot water, put it on the sprayer mode, and just spray all this stuff off on the Huram. Pretty similar, you know, you have a lot more surface area to clean because it's a bit larger. Um, but pretty much the same. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and pull out the auger on the Huram and pull out the auger on the shine here. If we can get that out fairly easily. All right, here's the shine auger coming right out. And as you guys can see, oops, it's pretty clean. There's a few, you know, uh, things, pieces of celery stuck on. And underneath it, there's basically no celery uh, to be seen. So that's going to be pretty easy. Just basically wash that off under the sink, brush it with a brush on the Huram, uh, I mean there's a little bit more pulp actually stuck on but all this basically just melts off as you wash it and then underneath, oops, <laughs> we're dropping celery pieces, oh yeah, underneath there, look at that, lots of celery underneath whereas the shine basically uh, had none. Next coming out we got the juicing screen and the wiping blade on the shine, uh, basically you'll have to remove the um, wiping blade which basically comes off. This is easy to clean, you know, maybe you get the juice particulate in these little um, gears there, not a big deal. And then you have the uh, juicing screen, basically I'm not seeing a whole lot of pulp stuck into the screen. And then in the inside of the screen you guys can see there, um, you know, all the pulp that's kind of still like residual, like stuck inside there that you will have to clean. Um, the juicer, such as the Huram, probably takes me about uh, three, three and a half minutes to clean. The shine, uh, you know, will probably take me about four, and here's why. Um, so it's about like a minute longer, and this is why, I don't know, I should show you guys this. I like the Huram screens because basically you don't see a lot of pulp like still residing in the screen, and this is partly due to, but not all, due to the wiping blade. Uh, because the shine has no wiping blade, it even, it's, it kept up and yield quite well, but there's a, you know, pulp literally like coming out of the screen that you'll have to scrape off or brush really well whereas that is not happening on the her on there um, in addition but inside the screen you guys can see the differences um, you know there's less pulp that was actually residual stuck inside the screen and then you got all the pulp basically stuck in coming out this ejection port that will easily come out uh, because I did cut pre-cut my celery properly we don't we didn't get any blockages or stoppages all right uh, last part to clean is the juicing bowl, juicing bowl in the shine, you guys can see inside there, that's pretty easy to clean, you have a little ring of celery in the middle, and then basically it's all coming out, the pulp is coming out where it should come out, um, you know, and there's basically no 
nooks or crannies in here. It's just like super easy to clean, which is really nice. So we'll put that back that way. The Hurum uh, bowl, you know, pretty much the same. There's a little bit of pulp there at the bottom, um, and uh, the pulp came out here. So, I mean, I'd say that's the same. There's some uh, nooks and crannies you'll have to clean in there. But yeah, overall, I'd say this the shine is probably going to take you to do the stuck on pulp you need to scrape out or brush a little bit better. Probably take about maybe a minute, 30 seconds to a minute more to clean uh, than the Huram. But then the Huram, you have this extra piece. So, I don't know. It's probably about a wash. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. I guess at the end of every juice off episode, I have to declare a winner of this episode. And I know you guys, I don't know what you guys thought, but to me, it was clear that for the price, of, you know, basically um, three of these, you can get one of those, and on this one, it only got like 8% less juice in this exact test. The cleaning time, maybe a little bit more. The warranty on the whole machine was three years, whereas on this machine, the parts only have two years. The motor has 10. In my opinion, there's really no good reason to buy the Huron machine for three times more of the money to get a shorter um, warranty on the parts and to make only 8% more juice. So if you guys are looking for an inexpensive juicer, um, you definitely want to go with the Shine over the Huron. You know, I'm not a big fan of the Huron because they have the short warranties. If you guys are looking for, uh, you know, other juicers that have a longer warranty than three years and are going to perform as good or better than the Huron, be sure to check that link down below where I compare the three top vertical juicers for 2017, which still remains the same in 2018. No major updates have come out. Um, check that link so you guys can learn more about those machines there, that, that, that more of the higher end machines. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to share with somebody else that they can learn about one of the best low cost juicers on the market that is backed up by a company that's literally been in business now in the U.S. for over 30 years. Also be sure to thumbs this video up if you always want me to do more videos with the Shine and the Huram and comparing juicers. Give me some love, give me a thumbs up, that, that, that always helps me out, uh, makes me feel appreciated. And also be sure to take your purchase at discountjuicers.com. You know, I'm trying to earn your business here by showing you guys things that other companies uh, simply do not do. Um, also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified when my new and upcoming episodes I have coming out. It comes out every five to seven days. You never know what new appliance or tool I'll be showing that will allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables. I think the next video will actually be a, is planned <laughs> to be a carafe that will actually fit on your Vitamix motor base so you guys could have a vacuum blender for your Vitamix, all right? That's going to be really cool. Um, also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge from 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel, uh, comparing and contrasting all different juicers, talking about the new vacuum blending technology, and maybe one day I'll even have some videos on freeze dryers if mine ever gets fixed, and also comparing and uh, showing you guys the latest dehydrators and other f uh, <laughs> appliances that allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables in your diet because they are simply the best foods on the planet and I want you guys to increase the volume of fruits and vegetables especially the leafy green vegetables that you guys are eating alright so uh, with that my name is John Kohler with discountjuicers.com be sure to visit discountjuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors